Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at my new favorite desk switch, which I've been using since it's released. It's a great multi gigabit switch and comes in at a great price point as well. What we're going to be looking at today is the Pro XG8 PoE. Now, I want to thank Ubiquity for sending this to me to do a review on. Now, let's go take a closer look at the Pro XG8 PoE. And this is the Pro XG8 PoE. You can tell it is a very nice design and it kind of looks like their UISP console, which I really do like. On the front of the switch, we have eight different ports, which are all 10 gigabit or multi gigabit. They could do 100 megabit, they could do one gigabit, 2.5, 5, and 10. They're also all PoE++. In the future, we're gonna be seeing more PoE++ devices come out. Right now, this would be perfect for door access or maybe their industrial PTZ cameras. We also have two SFP plus cages, which is capable of up to 10 gigabit. And you could see that I have a slot taken out already. That's because I will be using an RJ45 SFP plus module. So let's put that in right now. The reason I'm doing that is to free up one of these ports. And this could be my uplink to my switches downstairs in the basement. And also on the front, we have a reset button. On the back of the switch, there really isn't too much here to look at, but if we look on the bottom, you can see that they have these little rubber feet if you're gonna be mounting it onto a table or just leaving it on a table, which I'm going to be. Now let's take a look at what else comes within the box. My biggest issue with this switch is the power brick as it is quite large, but it really isn't that big of a deal. It's a 210 power brick, as you can see here, and then we have this other cable. It does look a little clunky when you're putting it under your desk, but they do also give you this mounting bracket. So what I could do, I could mount it to the underside of my table and then I'm never going to see it. So that's really not a huge issue. Also, what comes with it is this mounting template if you're going to be mounting the switch onto a wall. So that's pretty nice. Like any other device within the Unify Network application, once we plug in the uplink cable, you're going to see that your USW Pro XG8 PoE is ready to be adopted. And we need to bring this into our application so that we could configure it. So I'm going to click to adopt. Now with the switch adopted into our network application, we could start doing some configuration if we want. You could see right at the top, we have the USW Pro XG8 PoE. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the name. The name for this will be Office Switch. Once I put in the name, we need to make sure that we apply the changes so that that configuration stays. Also, you're going to see that it will update here in a second to that new name. And we could see the different switch ports. So you could see that I have two different things plugged into it right now. And that is one of my access points. We could click to power cycle right off of the port if we want. And you could also see the other ports that aren't being used and our uplink port. Our uplink, it's going to the USW Pro XG24 PoE but I will probably switch that to be over on my USW Pro aggregation switch. We have different colors and different symbols for what the ports mean. So if we're getting this amber color, it's on fast ethernet. Green, it's gonna be gigabit. If it's blue, it's gonna be 2.5 or a lighter shade of blue, it's gonna be 2.5. If it's a darker blue, it's gonna be five gigabit. And then another shade of blue, it's gonna be 10 gigabit or disconnected altogether. We also have this disabled and we have it where it's PoE++ aggregating or we could do mirroring. If we hover over mirroring, traffic to and from a specific port is also transmitted to another designated port so it could be monitored. If you're wanting to do any port configuration, we're going to need to go over into Port Manager. From our Port Manager, you could see what's plugged into the ports. I have on port 1, my U7 Pro XG, and then port 8, I have this computer, and port 9 is my uplink to my other switch. But say we wanted port 4 to be on a different network. We need to click on the port, and then we need to select the native VLAN network and put it onto IoT. Since this is on the IoT, we're gonna wanna have it to block all so that the only network that could go on there is the IoT network and then press apply changes. Now there are other things that we could do with these ports. We could locate the port, we could activate the port, disable, restrict, or do our pro audio video. With pro audio video selected, it will automatically matches latency sensitive audio and video traffic and prioritize it over other traffic. You'd see we have Dante, Unify Play, NDI, and so on and so forth. Scrolling down, we have our PoE and we could turn it off or we could leave it on to that PoE++ and then we have our advanced section. Under advanced, we could click on manual and do our switching operation. So either switching, mirroring, or we could do aggregating. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this switch supports 100 megabits half duplex, full duplex, a gigabit, 2.5, 5, 
5 and 10 gigabit. We also have some other things. We have ethernet port profile. So if we create a custom port profile, we could check this box off and then we could either select it or we could create a new one. We have flow control, port isolation, storm control, loop protection, spanning tree, egress rate limiting, LLDP med, and then we have our voice VLAN. We also have quality of service, which we're not gonna be going over in this video, but I will do a separate video on that in the future. We also have our switch stats, which we could either narrow down to all native VLANs, or we could select the VLAN that we wanna see. We could also narrow it down by the switch port. So if we only wanna see switch port one, we could do that and then get the stats about it. And then we have our VLAN section. So you could see the native VLAN assignment, and then you could see port number four, it is on our IoT network. Some other things that we could do with this switch, we have our ether lighting and lots of people love ether lighting. I love ether lighting myself and we could change the different colors. So right now it's set to the speed, but I'm gonna go over to the networks and you could see that the color blue is our default and then our test is this uh, purple and our guest is orange and then IoT is this green color. We also could turn the brightness up or down and then we have this breathing. A lot of people don't like the breathing mode and I'll show you it here. It will go in and out and in and out, but you could go ahead and you could turn that off. One other thing with this switch, it is a layer three switch. So let's go ahead, create a couple networks and use layer three for it. Under the network application, I clicked on the settings wheel and we're gonna go over to networks. From here, we're gonna create a new virtual network and I'm gonna call this layer three dash one. For our router, we don't want it to be the Mac telecom test. We wanna use the switch to do our routing. The Mac Telecom test is my UDM Pro Max. So if we click on this drop down arrow, it's gonna show all of my layer three switches as well as my firewall. We're gonna to wanna to select the office switch. I deselected auto scale and we're gonna put in a host address 172.16.10.1. Now, since we're using the switch to do our routing, none of the firewall rules will really apply to it. So if we wanna do any sort of isolation, we need to do that. Say we don't want this one to get to any other networks, we could click on manual and then we have isolate network ACL, which is our access list. Going over the eye icon, it says isolate this network's IPv4 subnet from all other virtual networks using an IPv4 access list on the Unify switch. Devices on this network are able to communicate with each other. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check that off and then add the network. I've moved this computer over to the new VLAN that I created and we're getting an IP of 172.16.10.197. We shouldn't be able to ping any of these unified devices as we have been isolated. So I'll ping 192.168.10.90, which is my USW flex. And you could see that we're not able to do it. But let's go ahead and create one more network. I'll click on settings, click on network, and then new virtual network. We'll call this layer three dash two. The router this time again is gonna be the office switch. We're gonna deselect auto scale and then 172.16.20.1. Now we're not gonna select isolate network or the ACL, the isolate network ACL for this one. We're just gonna add it and then we're gonna go over to our policy engine. I put this computer into the network that doesn't have any access list against it. So 172.16.20.197. If I try to ping one of our devices, I should be able to. So we'll type in ping 192.168.10.90 and you could see that I'm able to get there, but we probably don't want that. So we need to create an access list. I'm gonna click on the settings wheel and then go to policy engine. From policy engine on the far right hand side, we could see ACL. We could create a couple different ACLs. We could do uh, traffic within the same VLAN with Mac ACLs, or we wanna do traffic between different VLANs with our IP access list. I'm gonna create an entry. This entry, I'm just gonna say block layer three to VLANs. The type is gonna be IPv4, and then you could see the specific switches that this ACL won't apply to because they don't allow it. So my UDM Pro Max, as well as my USW Flexes. Our protocol is gonna be all, the source is gonna be a network of our layer three dash two. Now the action is gonna be to block, and then our destination will select the networks that we don't want this network to get to. So we don't want it to get to default test guest IoT or layer three dash one, and we'll press save and then we'll add. Now going back to the command line, if I press the up arrow, we shouldn't be able to hit this unified device any longer. And you could see that it's gonna time out. But what if we wanna get to my NAS from this network, which is on the default? 
Well, we could create a access list entry to allow us to do that. I'll say layer three dash two to NAS. The type is going to be IPv4. We're going to have it go over all of our switches. Protocol will be all. And the source is going to be our layer three dash two. From here, the action is going to be to allow, and it's going to be a specific IP address of 192.168.10.133. That is the IP of my UNAS, and we're going to add that within. I'm going to press add one more time, and I'll bring up the command line again, and we'll try to ping it. So ping 192.168.10.133, and we'll do a dash T on that. You'd see that it is still timing out. That's because we need this layer three to NAS to be above the blocking rule. So we'll just drag and drop and we should see that come online eventually. And there you go. You could see we could now access my NAS from this network, but everything else is blocked out. And that's gonna be it for my video on the Pro XG8 PoE. And I really do like this switch. It has a nice compact feel to it. The only disadvantage is that big power bar. But like I said, I'm just gonna mount it under my desk and I won't be able to see it. For $499, this is great. It gives you 10 gigabit and PoE++. It also does layer three switching. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the switch. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.